Okay, this is going to be a video tutorial on the Topcon KRP32 software, how to set it up. We, in part one of our movie, you saw how to set up the instrument itself, the KR8000PA. Now we're going to talk about the software setup. Once you install the software, you will have an icon here called the KRP32 software by Topcon. You're also going to see another icon, which I put right above it, the KR8000PA reports icon. That's where all your reports will go into that folder once you print it out instead of actually printing it out to a printer a lot of people want to print it out to a PDF so that they can put it into their EMR programs because most EMRs will take standard PDFs. And the beauty about the KR8000PA it'll give you not only the autorefraction, keratometry reading, and mapping all on one sheet of paper for both eyes. So that's what you'll get on the PDF printout. You can look at all that information and store it in your EMR program. So that's going to be that folder. And we're also going to talk a little bit technically on how the KRP32 software talks to the KR8000PA by itself, how they talk back and forth. So once we get that icon on, on the desktop, this one will already be on there. And the KR computer icon, you're going to right click on that icon. You're going to go down to properties. You're going to select device manager. And you're going to go down here to look at ports. You're going to see that most laptops today do not come with a serial port. Some desktops still do, but most don't. Most are only coming with USB ports. So we have to buy a USB to serial port adapter. That's what this is. Once you install that, just to follow the directions that come with them, it's pretty easy. They're going to assign a COM port to that particular adapter. Okay? And to find out what COM port that is, once you install it, you go to the device manager just like we did. You click right here on the, and most of them will be prolific. There'll be other brands, but most of them are prolific. You'll see it's assigned to COM1. But generally, it won't assign it to COM1 originally. It'll assign it to COM4, 5, 6, or 7, whatever it thinks it's not being used. To change that, you right-click. You go down to Properties. While you're there, look at Port Settings. This should be 96. 100, 8, none, one, none. Make sure the driver says the name of the company that makes it, Prolific in this case. And you don't need to worry about the details, it just tells you about what it is. Go back to the general one. It should say this device is working properly. If all that's the case, go to your port settings, go to advanced. This is where you set the COM port. Most of the time, like when I set this one up, it took COM port 4. I don't like using COM port 4. I like using 1, 2, and 3. And if they're available, you'll see the entire list of COM ports. And then you go up, you'll see COM 1 was available. If it's not, if it's being used by the computer, it'll say in use, in use. Then you'll have to select 3 or 4. Keep in mind, the KR8000PA, as well as the CV5000, which this connects to, can only work on COM ports 1 through 4. Can't do one on 5, 6, 7, or 8. It has to be 1 through 4. And they're almost all instance, instances, they are available for use. So once you've selected COM1, you'll hit OK, and that will automatically take you and install it to COM1, and you can go back and check COM1. You may have to restart the computer and look at this same thing again to make sure that it's COM1. Again, once it boots up to the desktop, right-click Computer, go to Properties, go to Device Manager, and go to ports and make sure it says COM1. Once you're done that, now you're ready to set the KRP32 software. Go to the KRP32 software and double click it. You already saw in the previous movie that you have that up for to set up the KR8000PA when you go down to that Placidio disk you have to, to send that data over. We already did that. So you have to do all this first before that will happen. The ports have to be set before all that happens. Okay, so we're going to go up here to Port. It says Select COM Port for KR. This is the USB to RS-232 adapter that you have. This You just set to COM1. So you're going to hit that. And you're going to see Select KR Port COM1. Chances are some of the other ones might be available, but you're going to set it to the one that you just set the adapter for, COM1. And you're going to hit OK. Now, if we were using a CV5000, you have to do the same exact thing. Install another adapter. That'll be two adapters on the computer. You're going to install two adapters 
One will be set to COM1, the other one can be set to COM2, 3 or 4. As long as it's 1 through 4, it doesn't matter. And then you'll go to Port, and you'll go select COM port for CV. You'll select that. In this case, you'll see none of the other ones are available on this machine because I don't have any other ports connected. But if I were, 2, 3, or 4 would be available. Then you'd select the COM port for the CV. And when you're using a CV 5000, you have to select the new format. And you also have to select the new format on the power supply setup on the CV 5000. So you have to make sure those dip switches in the power supply are set for new format. Once you do that, the data will be passed from the KR8000PA through into the computer, analyzed by the computer, and resent out by, by the computer out to the CV5000 onto the KB50 console at the CV5000. That will all be done automatically if all this is set up. It works flawlessly if you have all this set up right. I've done it many times, so I know all the ins and outs here. Okay, so we're going to cancel this for now because we're not using a CV. Now what we're going to do is, is we're going to come across and we're going to actually take a reading from the KR8000PA to show you how this works. We're going to double click on the KR8000, KR32 software and I've already taken some readings using the schematic eye, make sure you use the schematic eye, to um, transfer from the KR8000PA into the software. So once you take your readings you're going to hit the print button which was described in the first video and it's going to print it out and you can probably hear it, it's printing it out on the tape right now, and it's going to transfer the data over to the computer. As you can see, it's receiving data. We're going to do this actually twice, okay? The first time is with just the autorefraction keratometry reading, there is no mapping with this software, with this setting. No mapping. You see it's blank right there, okay? If you lift up the door on the KR8000PA, you'll see the word map appear on the screen in the KR8000PA, and if you hit print there, it's going to print out the same data, but this time it's going to include the map for the left eye and the right eye. Okay, So it's going to calculate that out. You'll hear it print out on the three and a half inch wide tape on the machine itself. Once it gets done printing both eyes, it'll automatically start transferring this data over. If you do not want it to print out on the tape, just take off the door and take that little lever where the print lever is for the print paper to go under and lift it up. That'll stop the printout coming from the machine on the three and a half inch roll. Now you can see, now we have the data across and now we have the same autorefraction keratometer data, but if we scroll down here, you'll see we have the mapping. Okay. One of the other things you want to do too is one that on the mapping, you want to go to the utility, map options, and make sure you're unnormalized. It comes in as absolute. Make sure you change it to normalize and make sure you have save settings checked when you do that and hit OK. This time your mapping will become normalized and if there was some mapping here you would see that S, that figure 8 figure right in here if this was a real eye. This is the schematic eye so it's pretty flat. On normalized you won't get that. I mean on, um, uh, on um, adjustable you won't get that. On normalized you will get that figure 8 setting with all the different variances of the height. Now we want to save these images. We're only going to save the one with the mapping for right now. So that's the top one here. That's the latest one. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to go over and hit print. I've already configured the software so that the printer icon on this software will become a PDF. That should be a separate movie. We should do a movie on that. Maybe we'll do that because this one's going to be awfully long and awfully large. So we're going to do that and we'll click the printer icon. You can see it's printing it. And it's going to come up and ask you to name the file. Normally we would name it the last name, the patient's last name. So we'll do Smith. Let's do Gene. Then you have to give it a number, 001, 002, so on and so forth. Because you can't have the same file name in the same folder. It won't let you do it. If it already exists, it'll come up and tell you that it already exists. Then you hit save. If you make sure open the document after creation is checked, what will happen is it will automatically open up an Adobe Reader and you'll see it on the screen. That's the way I'm going to configure it. That's the way we'll do it. We'll show it right here. Hit save. It's going to tell you that it's been created and there it is coming up as a PDF document right there for you to print out or send it to an EMR. Now you're saying, well, where did this go? That's what that icon is on the home screen. So right now we're going to just close this out. 
We're going to minimize the KRP32 software down here on the taskbar so it's ready all day long. You don't need to close it out. When they're done with the patient, I recommend them just closing them out so they're ready for the next patient. However, sometimes you can, you can stack them up if you want and go back to them and uh, review them that way. But if you just close them out after each patient, then you always have a blank one ready to go for the next one. And if you minimize this down, keep it ready for the all day. If you go here to the KR8000PA reports, you double click, you'll see that um, they'll come up in a list. There they all are. These are the ones that we've done today, earlier testing. Okay, And um, you can see the one that we just did with a Gene Smith right here. If we double click it, it'll open it up in W Reader and it'll be there. You can see here's one that we did earlier with a map, patient test. Okay, there's what I was talking about, the normalized. You can sort of see the S curves and right there a little bit. Okay, so that's where they're located. Once they're on, once the once you can get to here, you can import them into your EMR, export them out, put them on a thumb drive, move them wherever you want to go, and put them into your EMR. So this concludes the setup for the KR32 software for the KR8000PA. Autorefractor keratometer topographer. Thank you very much.